Hi, I'm Dr. Sandra Baston with the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And I'm Ann Hall Norris, Food Preservation Specialist with the Cooperative Extension Service. So today we're going to bring you a series, this is going to be the first of a series of food preservation videos. Um, they're short videos that will give you all the information you need to be able to can your uh, produce at home with uh, either a boiling water bath or a pressure canner. And we're going to start out by telling you that uh, one of the first things you need to do is make sure that you're using USDA uh, approved recipes. And we have several uh, books here that you could use. This is from the University of Georgia and it's so easy to preserve and it's a um uh, as a result of a USDA grant and so they took all the old home canning uh, recipes and brought them up to date. They're research based. Yes. yes. All of these are uh, USDA research based recipes. Then we also have the Ball Blue Book which is a for-profit organization. Ball makes many of our um, home canning uh, jars, uh, some of our canners, and um, it has uh, some really good pictures. Um, so if you're a step-by-step -step visual person, this is a really good one to get. And then uh, the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service also has their own publications. And the beauty behind these is that we have put them in um, so that there are, um, you start out with uh, easy recipes. You can go to mediums. Um, so we have easy recipes for beginners, we have intermediates as you become more comfortable, and then we move on into advanced recipes with a few ingredients that may be a little bit more difficult to find. So those are some things that you can be thinking about. Where are you going to get your approved recipes? Now I'm going to tell you about some of the things that we're going to need for both a home canning uh, in a boiling water bath and in a pressure canner. The difference between a boiling water bath is um, that it's at 212 degrees. Our jars are covered with boiling water. The products themselves have some type of acid, acid. in them. Mm -hmm. And so it might be vinegar, it might be lemon juice, um, um, but uh, we will use, uh, this is a pepper jelly, um, and these are both pepper jellies. So these are the, the types of things. Um, and Hall, help me, we can have uh, corn relish. Pickles, salsa, barbecue sauce. Um, any, th any fruit jams and jellies, anything with a pH below 4.6. They start out with a high acid content or you're adding acid to those products. So what you're doing for these types of products is that you're putting the pH at a point where uh, bacteria that could cause illness uh, will not grow. And so the usually Clostridium botulinum is the the bacteria that we are concerned with, and it will not grow in a uh, high pH product. And so we can boiling water bath at 212 degrees. So some of the things we want to look at is that there's lots of different jars out there, and some of them are wide-mouthed, some of them are um, uh, not wide-mouthed, and I like the wide-mouthed ones. They're not quite as pretty. The, yes, yeah, and the there's our, our jars, mm -hmm. but the lids, but the um, they're not quite as pretty in the wide mouth, but they're easier for me to get the food into. However, um, there are some handy-dandy kinds of tools that will help us with this, and one of them is the funnel. And no matter what you're putting in here, whether it's liquid or more solid, this helps you. It helps you get the proper headspace, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, then also, there is a, um, this used to be really important. It's a, um, it's a magnetic piece that allows us to pick up the lids. Uh, we used to have to boil these, but now these have a silicone inside rather than rubber, and so they um, uh, stick much better, and we don't have to get it warm. The heat of the jar will, will take care of it. And then we also have a head space, and I brought, I'm getting ready to make a Creole soup, and so I brought um, a jar. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, it does. <laughs> um, and we can put in, this is an inch, so you can see that I've got just a, almost an inch of headspace, which is what this requires. Um, as we get down into our pickled, it's about a half inch, and when we get we get down into a, um, a, a subtype of jam, it's about a quarter of an inch. Yes. And what we like about these screw lids is that we can actually see that the, that the headspace is about a quarter of an inch. It's really important to have 
have the proper head space for um, your jams or jellies or anything that you're going to um, process because that allows your um, products to pull a seal or pull a vacuum inside of the product so that it will stay sealed and you won't have to worry about anything getting in it. You can actually seal these jars if you put them in the uh, in the trunk of your car and um, so that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to stay sealed. You have to properly follow the recipe in order for um, uh, these to be safe to, be safe. to eat. There used to be a, a concept called open kettle canning where you would just heat the food, put it in the jar, or maybe put the jars in your oven. And the, the jars will form a seal as they cool, but that product isn't safe. And also the seal won't last very long. Let's talk about the jar lifter when, yes. when they're talking about utensils too. Well, I wanted to show them that there are different colors oh, okay. that are available. There, We have a quilted one. Um, we have, besides the wide mouth and the... Um, regular uh, jar, bar, ball jars. Uh, you also have some that are squat um, and um, you have some that are rounded and have berries on them. So there's lots of different opportunities for you to um, make your products pretty if that's what you want to do. What is important is that you purchase jars that were made for canning and not storage jars or craft jars because these, uh, the glass in these jars has been specially tempered and so it can withstand going in and out of high temperatures, the boiling water bath canner or the pressure canner. So it's important that you purchase canning jars when you, when you purchase your jars for canning. So this is a jar lifter yes. and this is our favorite, favorite. <laughs> because um, when I was canning first with my grandmother, I used a just a plain old tongs, tongs. and you talk about dangerous. Mm -hmm. It was very dangerous. But we can lift this jar up and then put it inside a canner. We can carry it around and put it where we need to, but we do need to be organized when we're trying to uh, preserve our foods. So let's, um, right now, and during season, um, in season, mm -hmm. ball puts out this um, utensil set for preservation and all of those things that we talked about are included so that you can um, yeah. use uh, the funnel, the jar lifter, um, this head is uh, for headspace but you can also remove bubbles which we're, you need to make sure that you do when you're canning and then the uh, magnetic um, lid lifter. So let's talk about the Boiling, water, Boiling bath water bath canner. That's what we want to talk about next. You want to make sure when you're buying lids that you buy lids that are new. And so look at the date on your container to make sure that it is correct. We'll start with the speckled granite ware um, canner. This one is common in grocery stores or your um, your big box stores. It's about $17 and it when you purchase a canner it will come with a rack. Um, when you're using a boiling water bath canner, any large pot that you can get two inches of water over your jars will work as a boiling water bath canner, uh, but the rack is very important for raising and lowering the jars. So if you'll give me the other one. So we also have one that has a lid. And we like this one because you need to keep the water boiling. Once you start the um, temperature or the timing of your product, you want to make sure that um, your water stays boiling. And so I would. This is my favorite. Yes, this is her favorite. <laughs> and um, you'll notice we can lift this up. And then we can fill our jars. We can put our jars in there without problems. We use our hot handles to put it down in there, and then we can also pick it up. Or we can use our jar lifter. Jar lifter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we like this because um, it, the lid we is can clear. see the boiling mm -hmm. water, and we can keep it boiling as we're timing our um, products. Then um, pressure canning is different. Pressure canning is for all vegetables. They are low acid products, and the pressure canner requires a higher temperature, and it allows us to have a higher temperature, and this higher temperature um, is um, what actually kills um, things like Clostridium botulinum and their toxin. So with a boiling water bath at 212 degrees, we're using acid to keep it under control, but in the pressure canner, we're using a higher temperature, which we have to get form under pressure, enable for us to, to do all uh, fresh vegetables, which are low acid products. 
they even if they have um, like tomatoes, you can do tomatoes in either one. Mm -hmm. But I have made um, these the this Creole sauce, which is 25 minutes in the pressure canner at 10 pounds of pressure, which in Kentucky is about everywhere except for Pine Mountain. Um, and so you would have to use different time sources, but we can figure that out. Um, and um, if we were doing quarts, then um, the bigger size uh, would uh, take for 30 minutes. So there are two types of pressure canners that you can purchase that will get up to the 240 degrees under pressure that you're trying to do. This one happens to be um, a Presto, and um, it has a dial gauge. And the dial gauge actually shows you where the pounds of pressure is at any given point. Right now, you know that it's at zero, but it, under heat and with a little water in your canner, then it's going to, um, and a closed system, then it's going to build up pressure. Mm -hmm. I am going to follow the amount of water um, by using my um, instruction book. Almost all of them have instruction books that tell you exactly how much water to put in it. But what we really like about this one is that it has a little rack at the bottom because your jars will start to jiggle and mm -hmm. it'll keep them from breaking. And it also has a line where you're going to put the water. Now, when I first started canning with my grandmother, I actually, um, she was dead at the time, and um, it was the first time I was going to can. I was so excited, and I knew my grandmother was going to be so proud of me, and I filled this baby up with water just like I would the boiling water bath, and of course it didn't come up to pressure. So um, make sure that you know and are paying attention and are reading your instructions so that you can um, do this correctly. Okay, so I've, just a second, I'm going to show them something. So we're going to um, put our handy dandy, I've got two inches of water in here. I'm put my, um, use my jar lifter to actually put the product in. Remember, I've followed the instructions on my recipe. I've got the correct headspace so that I can pull a vacuum. I've um, taken the, cleaned the lip so that I can, uh, my seal will be complete on my lid. And then I've put, I have actually put this um, on hand tight so that it um, won't be too tight for me to undo. So then I'm going to um, close, oh, make this a closed there we go. system. And I, we love this too because it, it lines up with these V's and we don't have to think. And sometimes that's hard for us to do. And that's why we have our recipe available and we have all the things that we need ready to go before we actually do our canner. So once I put this, I've got it all closed up, um, I'm ready to can, um, I am going to allow this uh, to vent the air. And the air, um, we want to get the air out because air insulates the jars that are in here and keeps it from reaching the correct temperature. So we're going to vent, and that takes anywhere from five to seven minutes mm -hmm. in uh, your canner, depending on what kind you have and what kind of stove oh, you have yeah. it on. Mm -hmm. And then this is, um, once that starts to, to form a stream, it starts as a wide stream, and then it starts getting thinner and thinner, and the little bubbles come up little, from here. Like little spit bubbles. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it is. And then th there's a little thing in the back that's called a popcock, and I don't think I can get it from here. Yes, I can. Not and the popcock... Um, it will start to come up as well, which tells me that it's starting to build up pressure. Mm -hmm. So now it's starting to build up pressure. We've pushed up all our air. And now I'm going to put on, um, I call it a jiggler. My jiggler is going to, um, also, it's going to make it a closed system, but it's also going to um, move so that I can hear it. But um, this is going to start to rise to the 10 pounds of pressure that is needed for this to be um, ready. In our pressure canning video, we'll go through all the steps of how to go from A to Z and how to get it up to pressure and then how to cool it. And um, once uh, we have timed this correctly, and my Creole sauce is um, for uh, 25 minutes, so let's pretend I've I've timed it, it's gone up to 10 pounds of pressure, I'm going to allow this to cool. I'm not going to run water over it, I'm not going to um, uh, help it in any way because that might allow your uh, lid to stick. So as the temperature comes back down to zero, then I will be able to very, notice I'm lifting this away from myself, and then this will go down and I can lift this away from myself, it's down to zero, and then I can open it. And there will be a little bit of pressure inside and um, luckily there's a nice little 
arrow for me to thing. And then I'm going to open it outside so that I don't accidentally burn myself. And this is a good time to show you that inside there is a silicone ring. Oops, the gasket. It's a gasket. Right, and both canners, we're going to talk about the weighted gauge canner in just a minute, um, but both canner lids will have a gasket, and you want that to be flexible. You don't want it to be dry or cracked. This is very important when forming a seal. You won't have pressure buildup if you put the lid on without the gasket or your gasket is cracked or, or um, not very flexible. Each year when you store your canner, you'll want to take a little bit of oil, maybe cooking oil, and rub it on the gasket mm -hmm. so that it, it, that it stays flexible. Then if you'll look on this other place, these are so much, so much um, uh, safer. safer than they used to be. <laughs> the materials and the metal are much safer. Um, they have this pepcock is here, and there's also this little silicone piece. And so if you... If you accidentally walk away, because I know you're going to stay right with your canning when you start it, this will pop and give you time to get it off of the heat before it will explode. And you have a little bit of time, but you sure don't want to have an exploding um, type of opportunity. Mm -hmm. So then I've, I've opened up my canning. I've, I'm going to take out my jar, and I'm going to leave my jar from 12 to 24 hours so that it can pull a, a seal. If you will um, look here... Uh, you see, did you see how it went down when I touched it? Well, that's the pop that you will hear. We'll do it again. Well, it's not going to do it this time. No. It's not going to go back up. There we go. Do you hear that pop? That's the pop that you're going to hear when this pulls the it pulls a um, a seal. But this, of mm -hmm. course, is not sealed. Whereas this one is very concave, and you'll see that there is no There's nothing no to pop. Mm -hmm. So, now we're going to look at the next one, and this is a weighted gauge, and um, there's no difference in this and the other, um, and the, the dial, dial gauge, gauge, except you can see the dial gauge, and this one is all about mm -hmm. hearing. Hearing. And so this is going to get on the top and do this kind of thing, but you'll see it's the same, same process. We've got a... Um, a a deep, pot. deep pot. We'll have instructions with how much water to put in it. We'll put the rack, the rack inside. We'll put our jars inside. Hand tight, remember. We'll close this baby up. And, um, I'm not sure I lined the V up for you. You didn't. Nope. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> the V's really help, the yes, marks. The it makes it so easy. So these just pop right back on. When the, okay. Um, there we go. And then I'm going to pull it together, and now um, it's got the same safety features on it. And this is, I'll let you show that. This is the weighted gauge. Um, it'll come with uh, two rings, and the rings just... This is why I gave this it to This is why you gave it to me. <laughs> they I couldn't get just, it apart. They pop right off. Um, when the when the regulator is by itself, that's that's five pounds of pressure, and each one of these rings is five pounds. So when you put this one on, this is what we um, process in Kentucky: ten pounds pressure. So that's one ring, and we'll put it on. And when it builds up pressure, it'll it'll rock back and forth. So we'll do the same thing with this one. We'll put our product in um, after preparing our jars correctly. We'll wait for the air to be expelled. Our little popcock will come up, and then we will actually um, put this on. And this will go like this. So if it goes, then that's too much. You need to back it off Turn a little the bit. Down. If it goes like this, this is probably what you're doing. Now, a lot of people, when you're doing this type, I call it the jiggler. The jiggler. Mm -hmm. um, the, the weighted gauge, um, they have a tendency to say, oh, I can hear it, so I'm going to walk away. Do not do that. Do not walk away. If you were on the computer or you were playing the piano or whatever it is you were doing, you would be focused in on what you were doing. So you need to do the same thing with your food preservation. And the same process applies. You'll want this uh, uh, jiggler to stop completely as you're cooling the canner and wait for the little pep cup to go down before you try to open the lid. And then you just simply release the last little bit of pressure. It tells me to, to turn it this way for opening, which is why I love these. And then I open it away from myself. And then I have the handy-dandy little um, jar lifter to be able to get these out. And once again, we're going to let the um, we're going to mark these after they have pulled their seal, and then we're going to um, 
We're going to label them. Label them, and then you'll know when you prepared it and whether um, it needs to be used more quickly. I also write what the product is because sometimes from year to year, I don't know what my canned tomatoes are and what my chili sauce mm -hmm. is. They look they similar. Look the same. Yeah, so I will go ahead and write what it is and the date. So, we will have some other videos for you to watch. Um, there will be one on pressure canning. Um, where we'll show you how to pressure can carrots. There'll be one on a boiling water bath where we will do a salsa. And then there will do, be one on um, how to cut some of the products properly uh, for your ingredients. Okay. So we hope you'll join us for some of those and um, I hope you enjoy canning.